Good. So today we're gonna do um, we're gonna do some side body lengthening, particularly getting into like the outsides of the hips. And we're gonna start using the strap. So if you wanna not worry about the strap or you wanna go grab a strap or a tie or a scarf or whatever, we will we'll have that be part of our, uh, our first part of our practice today. Um, I just realized, I'm not sure if I've said this on the recording yet, and there are a lot of folks who just catch the recording. Um, Parks is trying to reintegrate this class with their online offerings. Um, last time I said it was probably going to be about two weeks until that starts to roll out. We're at still two weeks, even a week later. Um, it's just been like a bit of an HR technical thing where they can't get my stuff in. Um, so it's a, it's a government organization. <laughs> and we're going to, it's just going to take a little bit more time to get that sorted out. But everybody who is in, the email list for both me and through the parks, um, you will definitely get um, notifications of that information. And I'm, I'm really, really trying to stick with giving everybody as much notice as possible. So I'm hoping for at least two weeks notice that we're gonna have um, the shift. And that's not gonna happen very soon, but we're working on it. Um, so it'll just change the login information, but it'll be the same place or same time, same Zoom. I, uh, I have been structuring classes lately based exactly on what's happening in my own body. Um, last week we did a lot of neck and shoulder stuff because I was really feeling a lot of tension there. And then I got a massage yesterday and um, I was like, yeah, I'm having some like shoulder things. And so he works on the shoulders and stuff. And then he's like, I wonder how your hips are doing. And we found out very quickly that my hips clearly need a lot of work too. So now that my shoulders feel better, that's where we're going into and it also is kind of like degrading up against this side space and and then we say i always talk about i have this like spot behind my shoulder blade that's said to be this emotional center but another place that we hold a lot of emotions are in our hips and i've been talking a lot lately about about how grief fits in to things um and how like we're, we're talking just constantly these days about being with what is and being with what's happening in the present moment and I was I was thinking a little bit more about grief and there's all those stages right and then one of the stages of processing grief is to be in denial about it and that's like the opposite of being with what is right it's like pretending you're not going through the pain you're going through pretending that you don't feel pain maybe pretending that the the impetus for that pain didn't happen, that you didn't lose whatever you've lost that you're grieving. And if we, if we stay in that place where we're in denial and not being present with what really is, then we're not able to move on in this process and come to acceptance. We can't stay in that denial place. I can't sit there and say, oh, I'm not feeling these things. Oh, my hips aren't tight to, oh, you know, my body isn't aging and changing and it's still just as flexible and limber and sleep just as well as I did when I was 25 because that would be striking denial of reality. When I am in reality, when I am moving towards acceptance, when I am coming to terms with what really is, then I'm able to greet the situation more realistically understanding that you know I can't just shut my eyes and wake up five hours later and be perfectly well rested <laughs> I'm not gonna get five hours of consecutive sleep anymore so making these changes and adapting for ourselves um, I've been um I lost a friend a few months ago um he passed away and I've I've been losing a friend over the last couple of months because she's choosing not to be around us very much and I realized that I've been grieving the loss of both of these people and I can't just pretend that everything's fine with my friend who's not wanting to be around as much and I can wish that my friend was still with us but I mean, these are not the realities but in order to really dig into like how am I feeling about this how has this impacted me how can I celebrate what I have shared with these people and look forward from there. That's been
been really helpful in managing those things. I'm also grieving the sleep in the body of my 25 year old self. <laughs> maybe not as deep of a um, deep of an inquiry, or maybe it is. Who knows? We're not gonna create a hierarchical structure. So let's get moving with these bodies that we do have today. Take your index finger and thumb together, and we'll start with face brushing to the center of your forehead moving outwards towards your temples. And then going from the sides of your nose out to your temples, along your cheekbones. Then going from the sides, of, from your temples down the sides of your face, along your jawline. And from the sides of your nose down to your chin on your laugh lines. And then massaging underneath and behind your ears, finding that spot from where if they lift up on the skull, that bony spot right behind the ears, you feel that nice extension into the spine. And trying to keep that extension as you drop your hands down into your lap. I was laughing with some folks about, you know, the losing the body of our 20s or losing the physical experience of being younger. And I know that it's just a continuous <laughs> Continuous slope from here. But um are you saying like would I go back and trade it? No, not for anything in the world. The passage of time and the wonderful experiences and theoretically the knowledge that we're gaining from moving forward in the world, uh, if the price of that is that the body is not what we expected it to be. <laughs> when we were younger, it seems a reasonable price to pay. I'll work with what it really is as I get there. I'll start with three ohms. Take a deep breath in through your nose. First exhale through your mouth. Again like that. For three ohms. Oh. Oh. to open your eyes. I'm going to uncross your legs if they've been folded in, and they're going to come to the diamond shape. So the feet are towards each other, the knees are open, and then make this a lot longer. So however much you usually have your feet towards each other or towards the rest of your body, see if you can move them a little bit further away. And then you're going to come forward, relax your chin down towards your chest, and ask yourself, hmm, how am I feeling about this? you're feeling tension in your back, I want you to come back a little bit more and then soften in kind of above your hips. Let's see if you can feel a little softer in your back. But if you feel okay with your hands down by your shins and you want to try to take them a little closer to your ankles, great. You can let the spine round, but try not to hunch, right? There's like a little bit of a difference between softening and just letting the spine cascade forward and like kind of crunching and burying it. So we're gonna do more of the forward motion. And if it makes sense, maybe you put your elbows at your knees or elbows a little bit further down the body. It can be a nice way to prop yourself up so that you don't have quite as much effort in staying here. Because we are gonna stay here for a while. So if your response is, oh shoot, I could be here for three breaths, but I definitely cannot be here for like two minutes then you want to be in a place that you could, you know, presumably be in for two minutes. Maybe it's a place where you don't feel a lot. And then over time, you start to feel like there's more space. So 
relaxing the back of your neck. This yin sort of approach is more of trying to let the shape and the sensation find you rather than going out seeking or reaching for that shape or sensation. Do about another nice long three breaths from this point. And start to walk yourself back up. We're gonna come down onto our backs now. So if you've been sitting up on anything, go ahead and scooch off to your side. Now would be where you're gonna grab onto your strap and then come down onto your back, take your knees into your chest. Just give yourself a little rock around to allow the body to acclimate to this new position in space. And then release your legs, set the soles of your feet down. You're going to take the right leg and then wrap the strap around the bottom of the foot. We're going to start with the legs straight. So you're going to be pressing the hips down and the heel out and forward, softening your shoulders. So extending out through that leg as straight as possible, really pushing out through the sole of the foot. Take two more breaths like this. You're gonna put a little bend into the leg so you can start to take it a little bit closer to you. Try not to lift your shoulders up towards your foot. I'm gonna do a little bit of a flaring out of my elbows that allows the corners of the shoulders to rest down a bit more. One more exhale. And then you're gonna release the, the pull a little bit. Take both ends of the strap into your left hand and slide the left leg a little further away and put your right hand down at your right hip. You're gonna feel this pushing downwards of your right hip so it doesn't creep up towards your face. And then take your right heel first over towards the left so that you start to loosen up the outer side of this thigh. One more exhale. Loosen your grip on the strap. You're going to take the right leg in and then extend the left leg out. And just holding on nice and close to the side. Big breath in. Big exhale. And set the right foot down. You're going to take your left leg in. You're going to loop the strap around the bottom of the foot, wrapping your knuckles up with the ends of your scarf or your scalp, and then extending the leg as straight as possible. So we're first firing up that hamstring, really opening up the back of the leg. One more breath out. And then soften the leg. So you put a little bend back into it. And then if there's room, you might start bringing it back towards your face. If anything, you just feel that hamstring stretch differently, even if the foot doesn't move very much, just that very different energy between pushing out and softening inwards. 
soften those collarbones, the jaw muscles. One more exhale. Then you're going to release the grip, taking both ends of the strap into your right hand, your left hand to your left hip, your right leg extends out a little bit more. And then you're going to start with the heel, pulling the leg across the body, using this left hand to keep the hip downwards towards the floor and down away from your shoulder. One more exhale. And come back to the center. You're going to release the strap. Go ahead and step it off to your side. You're going to take the left leg in and then extend that right leg out. So letting the front of your hip open a little bit. One more exhale. And then release the left foot down. You're going to take the right leg and hold it in again. And you might be able to hold on to the front of the knee, or it might be a little bit better to try to hold on to the back of the knee if that gives you more space when you get here. I want you to try to let your right leg be really relaxed and instead put the action into your left foot. So it's really going to be pressing out through the sole of that foot. Even if your knee is bent, pressing out through the sole of the foot will help to open the front of the hip and expand that space in the front of the hip. So try to relax your shoulders and take two more deep breaths like so. Relax that left leg, set the right foot down, pull that left leg back in, hold it behind or in front of the knee, it's up to you. And then extending your right leg out, pushing out through the sole of the foot. and long there. One more full round of breath. And then release the left foot down. Bring the right leg. And actually, you're going to extend both legs out. Sorry. You're going to reach out long through the front of the body. Mm. Stand up to the fingertips and the toes. Feel yourself filling up. And then exhale, soften. One more time, inhale. Fill yourself up with the breath. And exhale, let the breath go. And then you're out in kind of like this narrow X shape. We'll take banana asana or banana pose. Take your right ankle onto your left ankle. Bring your right arm over towards the left side so you can hold onto it with your left arm. And then if you can kind of tap into this little change, I want you to feel your belly button reaching an inch over towards the right and then pulling downwards towards the floor beneath you. So a little like rolling over and tucking it. There's a little bit of engagement in the belly. That's a weird thing to say. I'm going to think of your belly button, scooch over to the right and then drive down. Soften your inner right shoulder. Take another breath in. Another breath out. And relax that arm. Go ahead and unwind yourself, coming back on that narrow X shape, and then moving into banana pose on the other side. Left ankle over, left arm over. Maybe you're thinking of your belly button going about an inch over towards the left and then wrapping downwards towards the floor. One more breath out. And then release that 
Come on back to the middle. You're gonna take both feet and bring them up a little bit wider than your hips. Reach your arms back, maybe hold your elbows if you like, or of course, just leave them more open, a little bit softer if that's what your shoulders need. Toes up towards the shins, take the knees over towards the right side. And then as you reach the left knee away, can you summon your hip bone with your belly button? So you feel maybe a little bit of drawing in here. So again, kind of engaging those abdominals. I'm not worried about getting the left knee down at all. I'm more worried about reaching it out and away. On your next exhale, soften your throat and your collarbones. And then draw those legs back up to the center. Try to keep those toes drawn up towards the shins. Now take the legs over towards the left. Reach the right knee away from you. And then feel your hip bone being pulled up towards your belly button. It's a very small shift, but it's still kind of a strong one. Soften those inner shoulders. Breathe in. Breathe out. And then knees come back up to the center. I'm gonna roll over onto one side. It doesn't matter whichever one you're gonna be able to get to. And then you're gonna to come to prop yourself up on your hands. The bottom arm down here is gonna be down onto the foot. You're gonna take the top leg, cross it over. So you've got the sole of the foot down and the knee up. And then try to extend that bottom leg out long. Probably you'll end up kind of sitting back like so. And now you're gonna start rolling your, your top hip up and forward so that you create more of a stretch along this side. There's a kind of an inexact placement of this foot, but it's mostly like in front of the knee, maybe a little closer to the hip. So not exactly in line with the knee. You are letting this side drop down to allow this to stretch out, kind of hammocking it. One more exhale. And then you can relax that top leg. Roll yourself over. I'm gonna flip myself around because it's weird when I face the back wall. So you'll be up on this hand, top leg goes over, bottom leg extends out, and then instead of hanging out back here, you're gonna keep lifting the hips up and forward. Mm -hmm. Letting those hips drop down. One more exhale. Then go ahead and roll back a little bit. You're gonna unwind your legs and then you're gonna come into your hands and knees. If you need to prop yourself up at all, make sure that you find whatever squishiness you need for underneath your knees. And then we'll work with a couple of cat and cow. Feel free to be on fingertips instead of hands, but if you are down in your hands, spread those fingertips out. Inhaling, looking up, lift your tailbone. Exhale, round your spine. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat pose. Three more, just moving with your breath. Try to bring the elbows to point back more towards the thighs than the walls. One more. And coming back to the center, you're going to take your right foot and bring it outside of your right hand. So giving it, you know, whatever manual adjustments would also be helpful to you. And you want to try to stay there where your knee is above your ankle, your hips are where they are. You're going to take your hands one handprint forward. And if that's going well, you might try another half of a handprint forward. And however far forward you can walk your hands without feeling like you've lost your capacity to breathe. I'm going to stay in observance and recognition about how much space you've got today and not just being in denial about it. Try to relax your head. Allow your heart to melt downwards. Big breath in. Big breath out. 
and start to walk your hands back in. You're gonna wiggle your right foot a little bit closer in, just a little bit less wide than it was. You might come up onto the left fingertips here. You're gonna take your right hand to your right thigh. Summon your inner thighs in towards each other. Keep that right knee facing forward. Turn your heart up, maybe reach the arm up. I keep thinking about this thigh bone pulling back. Soften that belly. Big breath in. Big breath out. And then hands come down and the right leg starts to pull back. And then run back to your hands and knees. And then moving to the other side, taking your left foot forward outside of your left hand, adjusting whatever you need in order to get there. And then leaving the knee above the ankle as you bring your hands one handprint forward, and then maybe testing a half a handprint or so. And then continuing to slowly explore however much you are inclined to explore and try to relax the spine forward. One more exhale. And then walk your hands back in. You're gonna wiggle the left foot in a little bit. You can come up onto right fingertips to give yourself a little more room. Place your left hand on your left thigh, lift the inner thighs. So already start to feel that turning of your heart over towards the left. Pull the left hip towards the back foot. Maybe reach your left arm up. Soften your belly. Maybe you can even feel your right ribs rolling a little bit more towards that left thigh. One more exhale. And then your hands come down and your left leg draws back. We're gonna lower all the way down onto the belly. Go ahead and lower yourself down. Make a pillow for your head with your hands. Rest your forehead or a cheek. Give your hips some wiggling out. One more breath out. And then bringing your hands in by your lower ribs. See if you can feel your belly lift up. Maybe your pelvis lifts up and then you're gonna push the floor away. And we'll come back onto your hands and knees. Of course, taking whatever journey you need to to get there. Okay, you're gonna take your right hand, more than a hand print forward, and then take your right leg back, toes on the floor. We're gonna rock back and forth on the toes to stretch the bottom of the foot and also get a little bit of calf work in. And then take your right leg, cross the body. So you're gonna bring it over towards the left, keep the toes on the floor. And the more you push into your right hand and kind of pop that hip out, you'll feel that stretch along that upper right hip area. Upper, outer. One more exhale. And then come back with the knee, come back with the hand, and then starting with the left hand, more than a handprint forward, taking your left leg back on the floor, rocking the weight of the body back and forth to stretch out the bottom of your foot. And taking your left leg over towards the left side and pushing with your hands so the hips pull back, opening up that outer hip space. Big breath in, big breath out. And then bringing both knees down, both hands down, take your right hand. Shake it out, flick some water off of your fingers. Your left hand, shake it out, flick some water off of your fingers. We'll take a downward dog, moving us up to standing. Curl your toes under, lift up. Release your heels down, your hips up, your armpits down.
down into your hands and then soften your neck. Take one more exhale. And then feet towards hands and hands towards feet. Come into a nice, easy fold, relax your head down. And then bring your hands up to your thighs. Try to slowly release and roll yourself up to standing. So being a little bit soft with your spine and your neck and stuff. And then know we're gonna do some cross-legged stuff. We're gonna go into a fold and stand up from it. So if you wanna make sure that you're near where you could just grab onto a wall or something, you could go um, that route and see if that might be helpful. Um, but you might know that you feel fine standing up cross-legged. So I'll, I will mirror you. Take your, take your right leg behind. I know I just moved my right leg. Your right leg behind. And then you're gonna reach up and hold onto your right arm. You're gonna bump your hips over, shorten the space between your ribs and your hips a little bit, and then reach up and over and push more into the back foot. Big exhale. And then lift up, release your arms. You're gonna come down into a forward fold. You can hold onto your shins or your ankles or the floor or something you've placed in front of you. Maybe you bring your hands over towards the left a little bit, maybe you're holding a little bit more onto the left side of your leg. One more exhale. And back to the center. Find your feet, find your belly, bring your hands to your hips, and then lift yourself up. And then switching sides, you come over, crossing now with the right leg in. Reach your arms up, hold up to your left arm. Shorten the space between your ribs and your hips and then reach over. Keep that slight shortening. So it's not a huge crunch, a slight shortening. Pop that hip out, push into the back foot. Soften that inner shoulder. Big exhale. And then come on up, release your arms and then fold forward over. Did I skip something? Yes, this. Come on down into a fold. Relax your head and neck. Maybe you have your hands over towards the right side. One more exhale. Back towards the center, bend to the knees, bring your weight to your feet, bring your hands to your hips, and then your heart comes up. And then uncross your legs. We're gonna take the legs out wide, so come back into your space if you have them up near a wall. We're gonna take warrior two on the right side, and then bend into that leg, open your arms. So this thigh bone pulling in and back. We'll lift up for one inhale to peaceful warrior. And then take that space with you as you reach forward and come down on your elbow. Reach the top arm up and over. Keep pulling this thigh towards the back foot and push into the back foot to free that side body a little bit more. One more exhale. Draw the belly in, start to lift yourself up straight in the front leg and then shift your hips and come forward into triangle pose. If you can, try to take that arm up and over your nose. The key here is to keep drawing the belly back towards the spine because it can be very easy to go into a back bend here, which is going to make your balance very difficult and it's also going to pinch all of the space that we have been working to lengthen. One more exhale. And start to reach yourself all the way back up. And we'll switch sides, taking the toes all the way over towards the left, bend into the left leg. Open the arms for you too. So I've got this thigh bone underneath. My tailbone is relaxing down. Not pushing down, not jamming down, relaxing down. One inhale, the peaceful warrior, lift it up and keep that length as you come forward, finding side angle. Push into that back foot. Make sure the tailbone is still relaxing down. That the thigh bone is still drawing towards the back foot that you're pushing into but the ears are not trying to drop into the shoulders. One more inhale, exhale, 
draw your belly in, stand yourself up and straighten your leg. Shift your hips back and then reach forward, coming into triangle. If you like, the arm reaches up and over. Soften that belly back, lengthen the back body. Hmm. One more exhale. And coming up, lifting up, and then turning the toes in. See if you can also turn the feet in, and then the toes and the feet, or the heels and the toes. They're all feet parts. Okay, good. <laughs> We're going to take warrior one. So take your right leg forward, your left leg back. And as you reach your arms up and take Vira Mudra, lean forward like a half an inch. And then get taller as you inhale, a little side bend up and over towards the right side. Keep pulling your right hip back. Then come up to the center, keep pulling your right hip back, side bend up and over to the left, which is harder because you got to really work to keep that right hip in. And then come back to the center, lean forward more, bring your hands to your heart. You can scoot your back foot in a little if you like. We're going to step all the way up to standing. And then move through the other side. So you'll have your left foot forward, your right foot back, right toes forward slightly. Reach the arms up, interlace your fingers. Lean forward with your heart just like an inch. And then get taller again, side bend up and over towards the left side. Keep pulling your left hip back. One more exhale. And then lifting up and coming up and over towards the right. One more exhale, up and over to the center. Bring your hands together, your heart comes forward. You can hop your back foot in a little if you like, come all the way up to standing. Whether or not you actually make it in the one step, of course, doesn't make that big of a difference. We're gonna do one more standing shape before we start taking it down. We're gonna take tree pose and do some side bends with it. So if you wanted to be near something that you could hold on to or you could grab if you needed to, we'll take that. Um, start standing on your right leg to your left foot to your calf or keep the toes on the floor. Maybe your leg goes up higher and then leave it down here today. Lift the fronts of your hips, lift your arms. We're gonna interlace your fingers and we're gonna take a little side bend up and over away from that leg. And then get taller in the center. And then up and over towards that leg, which I think is the easier one, but you might disagree and that's okay. You could disagree about which we think is easier. Inhale to the center, and then hands down, foot down. A little wiggle. We're finding tree pose on the other side, lifting your arms up. We'll get taller, side bend away from your leg without letting your hips do wonky stuff, even though they want to. And then get up through the center, keep that length maybe increase as you go up and over towards that lifted leg. And then come back and set the foot down and set your down. In fact, drop your arms down by your sides. Let the palms face forward. Let the ears rise upwards. The fronts of the hips rise upwards. The shoulder blades soften downwards. Maybe close your eyes. And then taking a moment to tune in, noticing what your response was to the bending and tree pose, which makes it really hard to balance. And blink your eyes open. We're going to travel back to the front of your mat space. Finding that same Tadasana mountain pose. And coming from that space, the bottom of your exhale. Then inhale, lift up, get nice and tall. Fold forward. As you exhale, bend your knees, relax your head. Roll the shoulders back, come halfway up, feel your hamstrings lengthening. And then bring your hands down. Let's go ahead and step it back. Find child's pose. You can lay flat on your belly if your knees would rather not be bent, but this could be a nice way to release and open the lower back. So go ahead and walk those hands forward and then find some softness, letting your hips drift back and your heart melt downwards.
One more breath out. Start to walk the hands in. You're gonna take the legs out and in front of you. Uh, take the take the right leg up. You can keep it here or you can cross over. You might be sitting up on something if that's gonna help to keep your back up nice and tall. Lift your left toes up nice and tall. Hold the right thigh, right arm in nice and close. Lift up as you breathe in and then exhale, soften your belly. You're gonna be pulling this thigh towards the midline to release this outer thigh space. One more breath out. And then release that twist. Unwind your leg, send it forward, and take the left one in, crossing it over if that is helpful or interesting to you. Left hand in nice and close, hug the thigh, lift the spine, lift the right toes, soften the belly as you rotate. Big exhale. Release the twist, unwind your leg, and then we're gonna start sending the legs out wide. Nice space, legs open. We're gonna come forward, it's nice and easy. You might feel like you can come down and in a little bit more, just make sure that you're not rounding back in the spine. You wanna have that extension forward, even if it's a little soft, it's very soft. One more exhale. And start walking your hands in. You're gonna take your left leg, you're gonna fold it in, turn towards your right leg, and come forward just two breaths. Thinking more about relaxing the back. One more exhale. And start to walk it up. Turn over towards your bent knee. You're going to reach your right arm up towards the right leg. You can lift those toes and then take the left arm up and over. I'm going to feel this hip drawing downwards. One more exhale. And then lift up. You're going to take your left hand down. You're going to take the heart up towards the arm like Peaceful Warrior, or you're going to roll up in the stargazer for just a breath. And then lower hips back down. We're going to extend this leg out and you're going to side bend again over towards that right side. It's a little extra, a little different. Big breath out and then lift to the center. I feel like yeah, this one's so much longer. And then bring your uh, right leg in, turning yourself towards your left thigh. Go ahead and soften it. Not a long time, just softening the, the back. Big exhale. And then walk it back. Turn towards your open side again. Slide the left arm down, then reach the right arm up and over. Reaching that hip down. One more breath out. And then clean up. Your hand is down, lifting the heart up to the arm, or the hips and the heart all up to the arm. And then softening back down, hips to the floor. Extend your left leg, all, or your right leg all the way out. That's, yeah, that side. And then you're gonna take this side bend up and over again towards the left side. Drop that hip down. One more exhale. And then coming up, and we'll bring the body forward again, seeing if anything has changed. 
Maybe it hasn't changed the way that it looks, but it might feel differently, which I think is far more important. Maybe it doesn't, and you're just committed to finding breath and whatever the moment really is for you. And start to walk your hands back up. You're gonna take your what we did. Take your right leg forward. You're gonna take your left leg and you're gonna to try to cross over so that you're on the pinky toe edge of your foot. That wiggle your feet a little bit more together. Unwind your 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 glutes from underneath you. If you want to wrap up the bottom leg, maybe kind of get up, squeeze the knees together. That can be great. Going to be really intense in those outer hips. We'll do another intense outer hip thing later. This might be intense in your outer hips. Maybe you just try to soften forward in it though. This might be more intense for your bottom hamstring. Just one leg out variation. One more breath out. And then come back and unwind the leg. And then you'll wrap the other one on top. So you might take the bottom leg and wrap it in. I'm on the pinky toe edge of my foot. I've got my thighs in towards each of their knees as close to stacked as I can manage. And then coming forward with to whatever degree is reasonable. One more breath in, deep breath out. Walk your hands back, unwind the leg. You're gonna start taking yourself down onto your back. Your things, okay. And once you're down on your back, go so ahead and leave your feet down, maybe knock the knees against each other and let the body start to settle into the earth. Still feeling the breath. And you're gonna start to make sure that your hips, your feet are about hip width apart. So they might've been a little wider for that. And then the knees separate, they face up. You're gonna take your right ankle, place it up on your left knee, and then leave your foot on the floor for a moment. See if you can feel your hips reaching down. So less of the tucking inwards and more dropping the tailbone downwards towards your bottom foot. You can stay here, you can press your thigh forward, but maybe you reach the right arm in between the legs, hold the left thigh, and then you're gonna keep relaxing your hips downwards. Try to soften your collarbones. One more breath out. And keep the ankle on the knee, drop your left foot down. You're gonna tilt the shape over towards the right and then try to open the arms out. Maybe instead though, you take your right hand to your hip because that might be an easier way to soothe the kind of intensity that'll get into that space. It's up to you. One more breath. And then unwind 
your leg, come back to the center, come back to two hips down, two feet down, and then take your left ankle up onto your right knee. Stay there for a moment as you really draw your hips downwards. So you're imprinting them down into the mat as much as possible. Keeping that, maybe pressing forward or taking the left arm in between the legs, holding the right one and then dropping those hips downwards again. One more breath out. Release your foot, keep the ankle on the knee and tilt the whole shape over towards the right. You might use your hand to guide some softness and ease into that hip or open the arms out, it's up to you. One more exhale and unwind your left leg, come back to the center. You're gonna roll your knees over again to the right side, taking another little twist, a little bit easier on the hips this time, or I'm sorry, over towards whatever side, pick one. One more breath out. And a little twist over in the other direction, whatever one you were just in. Soften the belly. And then come back to center, set the feet down, let the knees knock against each other and bring your arms down by your sides. Snuggle the shoulder blades underneath your back, feeling the more open space in your heart. Decide if you would like to stay here, if you have any other poses to take care of, if you, if you would rather take a seat or if you'd like to come into corpse pose. Enjoying this time to rest. To be soft at the end of practice and preparation. We're restarting the day in a few moments.
Start to come back to your body. Breathing a little bit more deeply. Moving a little bit in the fingers and toes if that calls to you. Maybe you're called to take a good morning stretch. After a while, rolling over and turning inwards for this moment of gratitude for practice and having this opportunity to still practice together. And when you're ready, finding your own version of a comfortable seat. Hands gathered at your heart. Feeling practice, we release and all together. Big breath in. Oh. Coming down to the love and light within each of our hearts. Namaste. Thanks, everybody. Have good days. Thank you. Have a good week. Bye, Melinda. Bye, Judy. Bye, Ruth. Take care.